Hello, you're watching Monday edition of News Mongolia. Today is April 4th. For our top stories, Irtenborong hydroelectric power plant construction has begun. Mongolian judo team took fifth place at the Antalya Grand Slam 2022. 350,000 people visited the Mongolian pavilion at Expo 2020. For other news, stay tuned. Ninety percent of garments available in Mongolia are imported. Most of the imported garments are produced in large quantities for the mass market. Some of them are made of cheap material and meant to be worn for just one season. Locally produced clothing makes up only 10 percent of the market. Imported clothes have lower import taxes. On the other side, local manufacturers create jobs and produce value-added products. In addition, some raw materials and accessories that are not produced in Mongolia are imported. Local manufacturers are now exploring ways to use locally manufactured materials. Another issue that we are facing is a lack of workers, so we should pay attention to preparing the necessary workers. A goal to revive the local textile industry is part of the new revival policy. Manufacturers and producers are really pleased about this decision. Lately, due to the border closure and the deficit of materials, to tell you the truth, producers are on the verge of bankruptcy. I think local production should be supported. In terms of the textile sector, there is the possibility of supporting the industry through state procurement. For example, uniforms for public servants and soldiers can be ordered from local textile companies. Thank you for staying with us on MNB World. Now let's take a look at Mongolia's current affairs. Expo 2020 Dubai concluded last week in the United Arab Emirates. The international exhibition lasted 183 days, from October 1, 2021 until March 31, 2022, and was held under the theme Connecting Minds and Creating the Future. Mongolia was one of 192 countries that took part in Expo 2020 and welcomed more than 350,000 people to the Mongolian pavilion. Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Crown Prince of Dubai and Chairman of the Executive Council of Dubai was one of the Mongolian Pavilion's visitors. The Mongolian Pavilion was hosted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Mongolian National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, with support from the Ministry of Culture, the Ministry of Nature, Environment and Tourism, the National Museum of Mongolia and Irtenstown Tatar JSC. During the expo, the Mongolian National Day Business Forum was organized in November with 40 Mongolian and 30 United Arab Emirates entrepreneurs taking part and exchanging information. The Mongolian Pavilion featured more than 100 items from the collection of the National Museum of Mongolia and the National Library, including 495 pages of an 18th century copy of the Kanjur Sutra written in Mongolian script. Work by Mongolian photographers and products from domestic manufacturers were also on display. Anna Kashmir, Santoman Kashmir, Gobi Beauty and others participated in the expo and exhibited their products. Last week, Minister of Energy Tevimbich informed Cabinet that Irtenburung hydroelectric power plant construction was scheduled to begin on April 1st. To complete construction of the 90-megawatt plant within five years, the Minister of Energy signed a turnkey contract with Power China in September 2021. There are currently no households or businesses occupying 111.2 hectares in Irtenburung and Myangatsums of Hoft province, where the main plant facility will be built. But the the Minister of Energy still needs to secure the land that will be affected by the plant's operation in 2026. There are 1,251 residents in 270 households that need to be relocated. If the issue of compensation is resolved, it will be possible to relocate these households in 2022 and 2023. On Monday, the Ministry of Health and the National Center for Communicable Diseases reported that 81 new cases of COVID-19 were recorded. 
there were no deaths from COVID-19 complications reported. No COVID-related deaths have been reported since March 10. Meanwhile, public health experts say a wave of COVID-19 infections is coming with large numbers of the new BA2 variant infections already recorded in some parts of the world. The new variant is called BA2. It's a variant of the highly infectious Omicron variant. Nobody knows for sure how severe the new variant is. BA2 has already led to a surge of cases in Europe and the United States. In the United States, researchers are tracking an uptick in cases. They have detected a rise in the viral particles recovered from nearly 150 wastewater surveying sites. American health officials have said they are hopeful that BA2 won't cause another major surge, but they also also believe that other variables could turn the BA2 wave into a more damaging surge. As part of its ongoing work to track variants, the WHO's Technical Advisory Group on SARS-CoV-2 Virus Evaluation is currently studying the BA1 and BA2 sublineage of Omicron. Based on available data on transmission, severity, reinfection, diagnostics, therapeutics, and the impacts of vaccine, the group reinforced that the BA2 sublineage should continue to be considered a variant of concern and that it should remain classified as Omicron. The WHO says it will continue to closely monitor the BA2 lineage as part of Omicron and asks country to continue to be vigilant, monitor and report sequences and conduct independent and comparative analysis of the different Omicron sublineages. The Ministry of Health today reported that 81 new COVID-19 cases were detected after tests were carried out at the PCR laboratories across the country. Two people, all with underlying health health conditions died of COVID-19 complications in the past 24 hours. All new cases are of domestic transmission, 44 out of which were confirmed in Ulaanbaatar and the remaining 37 were confirmed in the provinces. 218 COVID-19 patients are being treated at hospitals nationwide. Additionally, 753 patients are being treated at home. Among the COVID-19 patients, there are 20 children and 3 pregnant women. Here comes the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Now let's take a look at our regular feature on sports. The Judo Grand Slam started on Friday in Antalya, Turkey. 18 athletes of the Mongolian national team went to the competition. The national team finished in fifth place in the overall standings with one gold and one silver medal. The first day of the Grand Slam organized by the International Judo Federation took place on Friday, April 1, 2022. On the opening day, the men's under 60, under 66, women's under 48, under 52, and under 57 weight classes were held. Natan who competed in the women's under 48 weight class, and Basun Hu remained in the final and fought for the championship. This is the first time the 27 year old has won the Grand Slam. 22 year old Basun Hu won her third medal at the Grand Slam. She won a silver medal at the Paris Grand Slam, a bronze medal at the Tel Aviv Grand Slam and a silver medal at the Antalya Grand Slam. As for other Mongolian judokas who wrestled on the first day, Pashu took 5th place in the men's under 66 kg weight class and Hortlato took 5th place in the women's under 52 kg weight class. Said Malay competed for the first time since the Tokyo Summer Olympics. He recently tested positive for COVID-19 and has not competed in a while. Georgia won 2 gold, 2 silver and won 5th and 7th place in the Grand Slam followed by France, Brazil and Hungary. Host Turkey won one silver medal, and the strongest Asian teams Japan and South Korea did not participate in the competition. Here comes the weather forecast for the world's major cities.
this was Monday edition of News Mongolia. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with more news updates. Stay tuned.